Now to introduce our, our guest speaker today, I'd like to call past president Bill Peeper to come up and introduce our guest. Thank you, David. We're running a little behind, so I'll keep my uh, uh, introduction short. Uh, although I must say it amazes me how much goodwill and how many big hearts there are out there. These people working behind the scenes, taking no credit for anything, but just trying to help people. And that's our speaker today. Haley Hunt is CEO of Verb, the Verb Kind. It's a nonprofit organization she founded to mentor children in uh, that are incarcerated. And I'm not going to uh, go through the whole resume, but she has an incredible background. Uh, and I will tell you, I don't want any of you to pillage her after because her father was Morris Hunt, who played on uh, the Alabama National uh, Championship football team and is a uh, uh, 1969 graduate of Edgewater High School. So be kind to her. <laughs> and with that, please welcome Haley Hunt. Between Edgewater and uh, Florida fans in here, I I I I, might, I know that you guys Edgewater Boone is this a Boone majority? Yeah, and then Florida. I'm sorry, guys. SEC family. Um, what a beautiful biscuit I am looking at. Seriously, I I just wanted to say, um, Rotary's not like I've never been like, hey, I really want to join your club because I love diversity and this is such a beaut I just wanted to recognize you guys you're doing an incredible job at just being a beautiful array of what God loves this is just incredible you know and so thank you for um, being so uh, beautiful so I know that none of you guys know me but if you knew me you would know that many things do not scare me in life except maybe you guys watching me tee off on my first uh, ball at a golf tournament coming up in May 8th. Um, and in those scary moments, I have found myself also creating the most embarrassing moments of my life, like the time when I forgot to put the basket underneath the golf ball dispenser over at Dubstred and 60 golf balls uh, came dispensing to the ground and uh, right in front of a lot of people, I was so embarrassed. I grew up in Orlando, Florida, thinking I would live my life as a, a singer, songwriter, marriage, family, and the white picket fence in front of the cute little house that everybody dreams about. My life would be safe and secure, not scary about, uh, nothing scary about it until about eight years ago when every picket of that fence started to break. My safe and secure life was over with. Everything broken, no husband, no career, no kids. And I found myself back in Orlando, Florida. I didn't even know what to tell about my life. I was there in a scary, in a scary place and even worse, I didn't even know what my purpose was in my life. Maybe your golf swing divorced you a long time ago and maybe your putter cheated on you and you pushed that putt and missed birdie again. Can you imagine it? I was 30 years old and in the middle of my weakness, a lady invited me to jail. And the next week I was pulling into the parking lot on the corner of Bumbia, Michigan at the Orlando, at the Orange County Regional Juvenile Detention Center. And who would have known other than God that through heartache, I found my purpose and launched a movement called the Verb Kind. And our sole mission, come to jail with me. In fact, just to let you know why we're called the Verb Kind, we are an action kind of people. It was 2020, a lot of protests going on. People were talking, posting, whatever. And I just got sick of people talking too much. You're driving me crazy. You talk too much. What are we actually doing? Like, this is action. You guys are doing action things. And that's why we, call, we are called the Verb Kind. The scariest place on earth is not jail. In fact, the scariest place on earth is having a life without purpose. I know that it seems like it would be, you know, the concrete walls always seem damp because the AC is turned down and the food isn't great. And some of the kids have made terrible choices. And there I am realizing this simple truth. My, my 93 year old grandfather says to me many years ago, if you wanna feel more fulfilled in life, get out of yourself and into others. After simply serving incarcerated youth, I felt new, but I also knew that someone had to figure this out. And so I want to share with you why I help kids in jail. The state doesn't like me to say jail, but it is what it is. They want to say detention center. But did you know that many incarcerated teens are there on drug-related charges? They've been employed to do the time for a drug pusher since minors have easier sentences. So here's a kid with no means, 
okay? No, none. Being offered some cash, they go to jail, they just don't finish high school, they don't even think about college and they become a part of the cycle. On numerous occasions, teens have told me that they'd rather be in a detention center than at home because at least they have their own bed and three meals a day. And a lot of times it's safer. Can you imagine one of your kids saying something like that to someone? I know that our kids in the system know better and whether they have a choice, need to feed their family, got caught up or whatever it is, but I do not believe that they aren't worth rescuing. It's too early to give up on a 14 year old and research shows that mentoring changes a child's trajectory. 55% are more likely to attend school, 50% are more likely to attend college, and what a difference in outcome, the outcome of a mentor child has. In the beginning of 2020, the, Florida, the Florida's leadership of the Department of Juvenile Justice called me and asked me to start the verb kind, uh, a one in a lifetime uh, mentoring program in Orange County. And they said, hey, we need you to do this everywhere. And I said, how many counties? And they said, 21. And I said, oh my gosh, this is not my plan. I was working for a pro athlete. I was helping pro athletes, some of your favorite athletes, uh, if you're football fans, uh, build their brands. I had a real career, you know, and I really didn't have like this dream to do a nonprofit, but the desire ended up being birthed in my heart out of the blue. And God's divine hand was on this organization because he gave me the keys to the jail. We are bridging the gap between hope and hopelessness. And it is amazing what happens when you combine time, love, and direction into a kid's life. There's a national speaker called Josh Schiff, and he says that every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story. Look how many of us in this room who could have ended up in a totally different situation if it wasn't for our home life, luck, whatever you want to call it, the grace of God. Our vision for the future is to duplicate our hope dealing across the state and eventually go national. In fact, just for fun, I had to get out of Florida for these grants. They're like, oh, you're just in Florida. What about other states? So I went straight to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, okay. <laughs> called the A club. I said, guys, I'm coming here. They're like, you do what? It went incredible. And now we have students from the University of Alabama. We have um, the athletic department involved and it's been amazing. So we're about to grow in Alabama as well. Uh, <laughs> to end my time with you this morning, a few months back, it was actually last May, I, I moved back from Fort Lauderdale and came back to Orlando. And um, I was featured on this magazine called Winter Park Families Magazine, right? In 32789 zip code. And uh, I wish I could have give you a copy, but I'm like on the front of this, this magazine with a bright yellow dress, it looks like Belle from Disney. And I loved the idea of being on the front of that cover one day, you know, with my cute little family in front, in front of the cute little house with the white picket fence, the husband, the dog, the kids, all that stuff, you know? And so they started to write the article and that fear started to well up in me again. Like, what are they going to say about this girl? Most likely to become famous homecoming queen of Winter Park High School, 2002. She's back in Orlando doing what? Like nothing happened for you. Your music career didn't work out. Your TV show never worked out. Oh, and you don't have kids, a husband, nothing like it all. But by the grace of God, I was remembered that. I mean, I remembered that just three years ago, I had a production deal and it fell apart. And then I stand in front of these kids all the time and I say, you know, I know y'all think you're, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? But you can't say music or athlete because, you know, everybody in the detention center, they want to either do music or they want to be an athlete. <laughs> and I say, hey, do you know, I thought I was going to be famous, but sometimes life doesn't work out the way that you think it is. And sometimes it's most of the time, it's better than you could have ever imagined. And so I always tell the kids, like if my life turned out right the way I thought, I would not be here, honey. I would probably be in LA somewhere with my, ki my own kids, okay? Not you. <laughs> but how grateful I am and how grateful are these kids and being able to have the time and the resource and to be able to come into a place like this and say, hey, this is actually an opportunity. Like you actually can help these kids. And so I just leave you guys with this. Um, I started coming to jail with me because I didn't know how to say it. Hey, do you want to come to the detention center with me? I'm like, no, do you want to come to jail with me? Because it is scary. And you go in and you meet these kids. But every week on a Monday night, we have groups of people 
that go in and we spend time with these kids and we meet them where they're at. Some of these kids are in there for, you know, I was just telling somebody, I met this homeless kid. He was in there because he broke a computer in a homeless shelter because he was mad because his mom doesn't want him anymore. And he broke a computer, but there's other kids that, you know, have done really bad things. And when they can hear that there is hope for them, you know, some kids feel like there's no hope at all, that they'll always be stuck. And so, um, I just wanted to encourage you guys. I started come to jail with me, the verb kind to change lives. We're in, um, nine counties in the state of Florida, orange County is our hub. And, uh, if you guys are interested, if you guys want to make an impact, if you have a resource, if you want to come to our golf tournament, I'm coming to yours. Y'all come to mine. We're having to get a foursome. Um, but we are desperate for help. And, um, our, our favorite, best, most amazing part that's coming this year is that we are starting to, to bridge the gap between the resources and the children, because, you know, there's a lot of resources in this city that a lot of people raise a lot of money for a lot of things. But for some reason, the people that it's raised for can't find the resource. So we are able to, we have access to these kids that need hope. And so um, maybe you guys have been to jail before. Maybe nobody knows that. Maybe it's a secret. Yeah. When you were 15, you got, you know, locked up or whatever, you know what it feels like, you know? And to be honest, we all deserve jail in some way, shape or form. We're going to show a video really quick to set the tone. And I remember so many times that, like, seeing those kids being able to make it through and knowing that somebody cares enough to visit them while they're doing their time. Like, you, it's, it's like you a mom, bro. Like, you a mom to them because, like, you a mom to the motherless. You feel me? Like, when you a when you were in jail and stuff, like, people don't understand, you behind the bars as a kid, that's even worse than when you were an adult. It messes with your mind. So for you to show up and show out for them, that's love, bro. Bro, you don't understand, bro. Like, I used to be that kid, bro. You don't understand. I was a statistic. It's okay, baby. Come here. I was a statistic. A young girl, pregnant, incarcerated at 16, nobody was caring for me but Miss Ashley. And Miss Ashley would come visit me every, every week when my mom wouldn't even come. But you understand, you got to stay in them kids' life because you could change them. Because the fact is, people ain't caring no more about these kids. They just be like, it's a lost cause now. And it's not a lost cause. Because if you, if you teach a kid to change his ways, if you teach them early, they could change. If you believe in them, if you give them love, something that they never have, they could change. So music, like, why would you not go for music if you love it so much, right? But you're probably not good enough. Like, that's it. You're probably, it's probably too late, and you're probably just going to be just like everybody else. That's a lie, right? Say lie. lie. How many times do we believe a lie over and over again? So then guess what we do? We act on our lies. And the Verb Kind is a mentoring program serving eight counties across the Sunshine State. We hang out with kids in jail. Haley Hunt, the founder of The Verb Kind, has made it her mission to impact incarcerated youth across the Sunshine State. Uh, there's one Florida nonprofit helping teens serving time in juvenile detention centers. One local organization is providing a helping hand. Now at 11, new mentoring program starts this week. The Verb Kind is an organization that partners with volunteers to meet at local detention centers. And now I'm doing a lot of work with uh, incarcerated youth. And founder Haley Hunt is joining us now live from Orlando. State. They've never ever felt love from a father before or a mother before. They've never played Uno. They've never had a pizza party. Like a lot of these kids come from nothing. And, and to feel forgiveness, to feel uh, a redemption, to feel just having someone listen to them is so powerful. Every Monday, a group of volunteers goes to detention centers and spends time with children serving time. Hey, listen, family, we just came out of the JDC here with Verbkind, and we had an awesome time. I mean, we, we were really able to go in there and uh, get down truth with the guys, you know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, you can yes. see the joy in these Amen. children's hearts and their eyes and everything. You know, this, is, this program is amazing, it's powerful, and it truly is life-changing. Uh, Haley, I've been knowing her for a couple years now, and she kept asking me, like, you gotta come to jail with me, you gotta come to jail with me. And like, obviously it's not like something where you're just like, oh yeah, like, I'm gonna go to jail, like it's a fun thing to do. But it was something I felt a calling to do. When you get in there and talk to them though, like they're all just kids and they're just a product of their environment. 
you know, all of us could have been them at once. Songs. The time these volunteers spend is creating new realities for children who otherwise might not believe in second chances. Hunt says every child behind bars deserves mentorship, no matter what it looks like. You know, like sometimes you can't really blame the hand that you dealt, but it's all about the response and how they bounce back from that. Because I am a South Florida kid. I could have been just like them if I would have made the wrong decision or anything like that. So don't underestimate the power of just showing up and spending time with people. All you got to do is show up and show that you care. So I just wanted to um, thank you so much for letting me share my heart and this vision. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you so much for having me. Haley. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. Your sister-in-law is incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, my name is Judd Peterson. I grew up here. Uh, met your dad about 52 years ago. He told me about the black strap molasses. He said he gained 60 pounds. So, okay. Sorry, dad. Sorry. I'm mean, 60 pounds. I well, should know this better. You know, you might have the square right. I, I started drinking it. Worst tasting thing in the entire world. Oh, yeah. Although after a while you get used to it. But wow. my question is, what, what are some of the things, uh, and by the way, I went to Boone, three of my teammates, Robin Parkhouse, Wayne Wood, Incredible. Steve Dean played with your dad yes, at, sir. at Florida and uh, at Alabama, should have been at Florida. Right. <laughs> anyway, but uh, what are some of the things that you guys do, like basic mentoring things that you do when you get a couple of things you focus on with each of the kids, like primary things you focus on? That's a great question. So one of the nights we have a playbook, obviously we have a playbook, right? And everything is football based kind of, um, we, we huddle with our team before we go in and each week, we, each month we have a theme and it's either uh, forgiveness or uh, career and destiny or purpose or mindset or whatever it is. So one night we have career night and we set up these stations. And I mean, you walk into this room and there's, you know, 25 high schoolers, you know, teenagers in jail clothes, like just got out of school. Like they're just hanging out and you set them up in these different stations. We've got the resume station. We've got the, um, uh, interview station. We have the tying a tie station. These kids have never been taught how to tie a tie, let alone have a father figure or a man go, Hey, this is how you do it. Well, at first they're like, that's dumb. Five minutes later, they're learning to tie a tie. They're walking around going, hey, Miss Haley, let me show you how to tie a tie. I mean, the whole entire thing changes because they got a little bit of courage and they it means something to them. They don't care what you look like. It's a man that has taught them something and it means a lot. And you go, hey man, good job. It changes the whole thing. So being able to teach them about career and how to shake a hand and look at you in the eye and, and helping them build a resume. I mean, just to sit down and build a resume, they're like, I, I'm not good at anything. Well, you're an entrepreneur. There's a lot of entrepreneurs in this place. Are there? You know, like you guys know how to make money, honey. Okay, we just got to direct it a little bit. So, they, oh yeah, I do know how to make money. Yes. Yeah, so let's figure out what you're good at. You have an amazing personality, or you're really uh, good at details. You know. So we help them with their career and just thinking outside the box from whatever little box they live in. Um, we also uh, critical thinking, and um, so we have a list of nine focuses that we really. Uh, write our playbook around so that they can um, leave with skills. And then we want to partner with people like your sister-in-law where she, they teach skills with virtual reality and are able to teach these kids stuff that, you know, they would have never learned. You know what I mean? Like some of these kids are never going to go to university ever, but if they can learn to train and we can teach them those kind of things then, but also about the heart and that they're forgiven, you know, because I was telling her, you can teach a kid how to fish, but if his heart is broken and he feels like he's not worthy to even get the fish, then, and that's where the whole thing is. The state's like, what are you teaching them? You know, whatever we're going, it's both. We're trying to reach them in their heart. So there's a lot. Of, so if you guys have a skill set or want to come teach them something, I don't want your mindset to be, I have nothing to, I can't really relate to them. You think I can relate to them? They always walk in, they're like, Miss Haley, you famous. You know, they like, they think I'm like some, you know, and then, but now they see me and they meet me and they ask for me every, I mean, you walk in one week, I promise you, you're going to be the guy that they ask for the next, you know, five weeks. Cause they, it just means something to them that you have shown up for them and you would meet them there, you know?
Anyway, yes, ma'am. Kelly, I was wondering if you could tell us about the process to be a mentor. Do you have to get fingerprinted, screened, and also what is the time frame on Monday nights? Is it weekly, monthly? Thank you for asking. Yeah. So the first time you just show up. So you tell me, hey, I'd love to come on a Monday night. If a Monday night doesn't work for you, I run the organization so we can work something out here in Orlando. But you come to jail with us. It starts at 530. And we're there from 5.30 to 7.30. We usually see two groups of kids. There's, there's boys and girls, it's separate. So if your heart is you know, to really see the girls, you can go with our group to see the girls. And then we see um, groups of boys. It's about two hours. And um, after that, if you decide it's something that you just wanna do, there is a fingerprint and application process. And it takes about uh, two or three weeks to get approved by the state of Florida. And even if you've been arrested before, it's. I mean, unless you have something really bad, they don't usually count that against you. So just FYI, I see some bad guys in here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, what kind of training do you give your volunteers and how many do you have in the organization at the present time? Yes, sir. So uh, the average in each uh, county right now is about 20 per and we have 10 counties. So 200 volunteers, but we probably have close to 500 that come in and out. You know, you... you serve for three or four months and then your grandchild is born and you have to go take care and you know and then life happens and you come back so we have about 400 volunteers four or 500 and we do trauma training we teach our um mentors how to deal with kids with trauma um how to communicate better and um how to deal with kids that don't want to talk to you because a lot of times there are kids that just don't want you there and if you can break that ice um it's powerful so we do do train our um volunteers how to better. hey what kind of where, where do you get your funding and what what's the structure of the organization and if you would repeat again how you got the very unique name of your yes our structure we have a board um it's a beautiful board of um very influential people from washington and california and you know alabama and wherever that have been in this system in different areas from data to social justice and all of that um and then how we get our funding is yeah by the grace of god to be honest because a lot of people um you know they'd rather give to sick kids in the hospital and if you want it, my then that's fine. thought is these kids are sick too you know they are sick their heart is sick and so um we are trying to do some events and team up with partners that believe in our mission and it's not an easy um, cause to raise money for but god's providing so anybody else have any questions oh, hold on just a minute yes do you have a website? But it's literally theverbkind.com. So theverbkind.com. Bailey, thank you for what you're doing. Yes, sir. Good luck with it. Thank God you. bless. <laughs>